Hello, everybody. <clears throat> it's Ashley Amick, and I am coming to you guys live, and we are going to paint our camo gnome together. I hope you guys are doing well today. It's been a beautiful Friday. I am just getting all of my uh, technical stuff up and running on my end, and then we can get started. All right. Now, this, this guy, uh, this blank is online. It's $25. It's 28 inches tall. Um, I'm, I'm using several colors, and I'll make sure and let you guys know which ones we're going to use. I did do two coats of white on him before we went live. Um, so he is already fully primed. If you notice, you don't see any paint. I mean, uh, you don't see any raw MDO through here. That's the look that you're going to always want. So I'm going to use my mop brushes to do, uh, these are those Cotman mop brushes. We have these online. They're $12.50. And this is what I'm going to use to do all of my base coating. Now, I do have, uh, I think lime green is the color that I do the most on here. So I, I'll just go ahead and start with that one. Oh, all right, y'all. Here we go. Very first thing I do. This is exactly why you need to uh, shake up your paint bottles before you start, unlike what I just did. That's a rookie, rookie mistake. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Amanda. Good to see you guys. Thank y'all so much for joining me. You always want to shake these up prior to using them. If you just saw what I dumped out, it was that separation. And so you can never mess with that. It's never going to come out the way you want it. So you got to wipe it and start over. So this is that lime green number 10. And um, this one is one that I use on, honestly, this is probably the most used color on here. So that's why I'm gonna go ahead and just start with it so it can get to drying. I do have one that I already primed earlier this morning before I left and went to the store uh, that is dry. So as soon as we get done priming this one, then we can uh, move on to that one and I will show you guys how to uh, shade. So, uh, so I had to turn the camera view kind of different than what it we're used to. You, you guys can't see me, and that's because this piece is so much bigger that I can't get it in the angle of the camera lens uh, with me as well. So you guys are just going to be seeing uh, the piece and not me. Hey, Connie, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, Connie's always helping out with getting, <clears throat> getting word out about us and answering questions. Connie is my aunt. So my mom, Mary, you also see her doing on the lives. Uh, Connie is her sister. So we got Connie and then we have Paula. Paula's at the store. You always see her work in the store. She's the one who does the Talavera. And then they have one more sister, Kelly. And uh, Kelly moved to uh, Beaumont area, I guess maybe a year ago. So we don't get to see her as much as we used to. And we miss her. But uh, th that's who you guys will see talking uh, at the store or who you see responding to comments and stuff on our Facebook. They are all my aunts. Those are my mother's sisters. So I'm glad you guys are here with me. It's been such a good day. We've, uh, I know I went live a little bit ago and showed you guys at the store all the new paint jars. I still got uh, Melissa and Janie over there working, uh, filling filling jars so uh, just so you know I'm just gonna talk while I'm working and uh, hope that you guys are able to see everything and just listen uh, but hey Jessica I'm so glad you're here honey I'm, I hope you're doing well uh, but yeah so we've been working on those paint jars at the store and I've noticed a lot of you guys have been buying that medium size and uh, so just so you know, when we run out of that medium size in a specific cl color and we only have the large, that's all we're gonna have until we're able to get more. Uh, we're doing our best to obviously make sure that we have everything that you guys are needing in the size that you're wanting. Uh, but you know, if we run out of a size, then that means we're down to whatever we do have on the shelf. Now, before I left to come home, I did make sure every single cubby that was empty on our paint shelf was completely full. So um, anything that you guys saw in that live that I didn't have on the shelf earlier, it, there are some on the shelf now. So all 38 colors and the chalkboard paint for any uh, door hangers, chalkboard door hangers, uh, that is all available now at the store. So right now I'm just kind of getting these edges. I'm getting this lime green on here uh, for my camo. I used uh, lime green camel 
and uh, dark green on him. So right now you're seeing me use lime green number 10. And the reason I'm doing this one first is because of this green is gonna be covering the most surface area. So I'm just trying to go ahead and get it laid down uh, so that I can move on to my next color. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this Cotman brush is brand new. I just got it out of the plastic before our live. So if you're noticing how clean these strokes are and how easy it's gliding, that's because it's brand new. So those of you that ordered this, which we do have these online for $12.50, uh, I'm hoping that you guys are loving these brushes as much as we do. Uh, these are, I know I call them Cotman, but they're actually Winsor and Newton Cotman brushes. Uh, they've been truly the best quality mop brushes that we've ever found. And they give you such a great smooth look when you're done. So let's see, I have, uh, I think I got the camo part on my hat done. Now I just need to do uh, down here, his, his pants. So on this part, I'm not so much concerned um, about getting up real close to these lines. You're gonna see some white left there. And that's okay because I'm gonna end up filling that in with my shading and with my outline. So I don't worry so much right now at this beginning process about you know seeing spaces in between or maybe a little bit of white left where I know it doesn't need to be white. That's okay. It's all just part of the process. So I, uh, I've been trying to, I really like to be able to base coat with you guys because I really think that uh, that's your first step, right? So I know some of you guys have been saying that you've been struggling with certain brushes or certain strokes or whatever. And so I really think it's easier to watch somebody do something and get a grasp of exactly how they're moving their hand and how they're moving their brush. So I personally like to get to do this with y'all, uh, get to base coat with y'all, but that also means I'm not always able to, you know, do multiple uh, projects at a time. Hey Lisa, I'm so happy you're here with me, honey. You said, what kind of squeeze bottles are you using? I actually get all of these at Ace Restaurant Supply in Houston. They're over by 610 and 45. Uh, they're just regular, uh, they, people use these in a restaurant for like uh, mustard, ketchup, condiment, whatever. And so I think this one's a 16 ounce. I have these in like 16, 24, and 32. So uh, I am gonna do a tour of my shop, hopefully next week, and just show you guys everything that I use and everything I do. Uh, but since I obviously paint a lot, I put, I store all my paint in um, squirt bottles. So when I need it, I just pick it up and I squirt it on my piece or I squirt it in a two ounce cup and that's the easiest thing for me. So personally, if you're using a lot of paint, like if you're somebody who is producing things that you're selling, then you might want to invest in some squirt bottles. They are a life saver. I love these guys. All right, so uh, my lime green, I'm trying to make sure, because I know y'all have seen me a million times where I forget something, so I keep looking back over it just to make sure I'm done on the lime green. I think I'm done. So that's number 10 lime green. Um, now I am going to switch over and I'm gonna do my camel. Uh, this camel is number 31, and um, I'm using this on uh, my camo look. So I'm using camel paint to make my camo work for me. Um, I did do a couple of these samples and I did one of them with a lot more camel and less of the darker colors. And personally, I didn't care for it. I liked the, uh, uh, the pieces that had more of the darker colors. So I'm not gonna put as much camel on this one. I'm gonna do a little bit because you always want that contrast between light and dark. Uh, but I prefer the camo look to have more dark colors than light colors. So let me see, um, just kind of, there's really no right or wrong. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have, you know, what I'm really going for is to not have all the similar colors touching. That's the only thing I'm really trying to achieve at this moment. Um, I'm not trying to stick to any one certain pattern or way of doing it. I just want to make sure I kind of have an even space of uh, all these different colors. So all the spaces that you're seeing left that are still white on the camo part, those are the ones I'm gonna use that dark green. That, that green I only usually use for shader, we're gonna use as a base. So 
A little bit of camel though, it keeps it light without uh, bringing too much darkness to the piece because it can be easy to get it too dark. Hey Alyssa, I'm so glad you're here joining me, honey. I got your, I got your order ready. You can come swing by to the house after, after we get off live and get your stuff. I live out in Conroe, so I have some friends that live out here that uh, they ask if they can, you know, pick up stuff here. Totally. If you're closer to me than you are to the store, I'm happy to, you know, get your stuff here. All right. So as far as camel, that's camel number 31. I'm done. I'm going to go ahead and put my brush up. And uh, the next one I'm gonna do is my dark green because he's the next one that I, I cover quite a bit with. So this is your dark green number 12. I have him in the small version, the one ounce jar for $1.25, or I have the medium jar for $3. Something like this, I think you might need the medium jar as opposed to the small because uh, you are gonna use quite a bit of it in your uh, base coat and then you're also gonna use it in your shading. Trying to just pick this up. Y'all know I like to do my corners. I like my corners to match what, what color it is that I have on top. So I always try to make sure I'm doing that as I'm going. So since I don't have you guys, I'm not actually looking at y'all. It's a little harder to keep up with comments. So uh, forgive me if I haven't seen something or I haven't answered it yet. I'm gonna definitely make sure I go back and take a look. Oh, I love it, Alyssa. Alyssa says she's, she's watching so that she can instruct her kiddos. That's awesome. You could also have your kiddos watch and let them see. I've heard the kids are having just as much fun as the adults. And y'all, you know, uh, something else I've really been enjoying is um, typically I only go to the store once or twice a week, right? Um, because I do live so far away and I'm obviously working at the house. I don't go there all the time. But the last, I don't know, several weeks, every time I'm there, there's people that I'm noticing that are there that are people that I've, I wouldn't have originally known had it not been for this painters group. So I'm kind of getting to know you guys and I'm seeing people walk in. I'm like, oh, hey, Lori, or oh, hey, Debbie. You know, I'm noticing people because we've gotten this closeness, this sense of kind of community inside of our group that I'm now recognizing people outside of, uh, you know, Facebook. And I love that. I love being able to have a first name basis with you guys. It's been such a great um, change from what we typically have done in the past. You know, like when we paint our own pieces and people come and pick them up, there's not so much of a rapport or relationship that we necessarily have other than, uh, you know, a, a customer and um, a business. But now it just, it doesn't even necessarily feel like that. You know, it almost feels like we're all friends together. And that's why I also encourage y'all to uplift other people and comment on other people's posts. Cause I think that, that that sense of community, I feel like it's something good for all of us, especially with what's going on right now. So y'all know me, I like to just chit chat and talk. So here I am just uh, talking away. I really wish there was some feature where y'all could talk back and I could hear y'all. Sometimes I feel like I'm just going a little looney tuny here, talking, talking to myself. All right, so I'm just kind of obviously all those other parts that were white. I'm just getting this dark green on as far as that camel goes. So let's see. Now I'm almost done with this one. Now this green, this dark green number twelve. I am going to use it to shade my lime green um, on my, the arms, the, this little bill of the hat, and then his pants. So I'm not necessarily done with this color yet, but when I do use this color again, I will put water into it and water it down. That way it's ready to be a shader for me. I'm curious to know, those of you that are on here, those of you that have painted, um, whenever you've shaded, have you been adding water to your paint or do you leave it? and uh, just stick with, you know, the thickness of it. I'd like to know what's easier for you guys. I add water to mine, but I'm curious to know if y'all found, yes, it's easier to add water or no, not so much. I prefer it to be thick. I think it's just one of those things everybody prefers something differently. It's kind of like handwriting. We all have our own way of handwriting, just like we all have our own way of painting. You know, it's uh, one of those things that's, um, just everybody has their own style. All right, so I'm just looking over and making sure I'm done on my dark green. I am done on it with my base coat. 
So I think next, I'm gonna get some peach on here for my nose and my hands. So I don't know if y'all could see, Carly wrote skin on here, just in case if I forgot what color I'm using. She went ahead and gave me the color skin. So uh, this one is that flesh number 29. All right, let me see, Lisa. Lisa says, as long as you don't start answering yourself. Honey, I'm always answering myself. <laughs> I have to. Uh, half the time, I'm, I'm typically a one-woman show. I do have a couple of people that help me a few days a week, but it's, it's a part-time type thing. And so, yes, I do always answer my own questions because 90% uh, of the time I'm here by myself. Uh, I run the, I cut the patterns. I run the CNC. I design the sheets that my CNC cuts. I uh, paint the pieces. I fill paint jars. Um, you know, I make files for all the sticker labels, y'all. That was 78 files and that nearly put me, put me in. It was a lot. But yeah, typically one woman show. So yes, I do talk to myself probably a bit too much. And so, uh, things but most importantly uh Lila, Lila thank you so much oh Lila I remember you I, I remember I had to ask you if it was Lila or Lila Lila that's so sweet I appreciate you You're, she said that we have the best service and appreciate and she appreciative owner y'all are so sweet I love getting to talk to you guys and know y'all a little bit more Lisa says I think I need to try adding water because I feel like it doesn't glide as easy Lisa that's the exact reason that you add water is to get your brush to glide and and go from your each point that you're trying to go to in one stroke if you can get it to move from point to point in one stroke that's what's going to keep it looking fluid for you um, I, I've seen when some people are saying that they've had trouble with certain things I really think it's because you can't get that fluid movement in a stroke, and when you can't get that, you're not gonna achieve the look you want. So definitely try adding a couple of drops of water and see if that helps. And um, I, I'm hoping too, whenever I switch this one out for the one I have dried, I can show you guys what that looks like and why, you know, ex again, explain a little bit better of why it is that I'm doing that. So, all right. Um, I need some black on his shoes and I need to do my flag. Now on something like the flag, you know, typically when I'm base coating, I'm going to use my mop brushes. Do you see how little this area is compared to my mop brush? It's about the same width as my mop brush. So for me personally, no, thank you. I'm not trying to mess with this because I'm going to get it everywhere. So that's when I switch and I grab my script liner and I use my script liner. Now, one thing I'll tell you guys, Lisa, this is another good thing. Anytime you're using a script liner, you better have water in your paint because it is not going to glide the way you want it to glide. So now, I any of my cups that you see me using a two ounce cup of, that means it's already watered down. Obviously, if I have it in a squirt bottle, it's not watered down. If I have it in a cup, it is. So this one is already watered down a little bit. I didn't put a lot. Uh, but you can see it's not as uh, thick and gloppy. Uh, whenever I start laying this down, sometimes I'm going to look at it and then I'll tell myself, uh, no, nope, it's not gliding right and I need a little bit more water. And that's when you just do a couple drops. A couple of drops will really make a difference. And I know, I know there's some of you guys out there that do craft paint, right? That make maybe door hangers or other things that you can use craft paint on. I'm not fluid in craft paint. Um, I don't use craft paint. I've never used craft paint because obviously we make outdoor signs, so you can't use craft paint. But craft paint is not the same as exterior paint. It doesn't glide the same. It doesn't act the same on paint brushes. It definitely doesn't blend the way uh, an acrylic paint would blend. So I think honestly with you guys, it's if you're just now learning how to paint yard art, it's one of those things that it just takes time and it takes kind of learning those tips and tricks. So if you see that, I just, I had to add a little bit of water to that and I also had to a switch to a script liner. If I was trying to attempt that with my um, mop brush, that would have never worked. So I'm gonna, this is my same script liner I always use is that you could see how it's bent, right? You can see that, that means it's a good brush. That means I've already uh, broke it in and that's exactly why y'all see me using it all the time because it's broken in, which means it's gonna flow the way I want it to flow. So I'm gonna also do the red with my script liner because it's a small surface area. This red, again, I did add a couple of drops of water. I might even add a couple more 
Uh, take it slow and just add a little bit because once you add too much, there's nothing you can do other than add more paint. And if you don't have more paint on hand, that could pose an issue. So whenever I do this, I get a ton of paint on this brush. This brush is not, it's not going to hold as much paint as, you know, a, a, a mop brush would because it's not designed to, it's not supposed to. So you're the one who's gonna have to put a lot of paint on there. So since it's wet, I don't know if y'all can see, I got a couple of streaks, but that's okay. Once it dries and I can go in and shade it, that's when we go and cover up all those little boo-boos. All right. There we go. Now the rest of it is gonna be ready. Oh, you know what? I'm about to talk too fast because I don't even have my shoes done. Uh, I gotta get some black on my shoes and then the rest of it will be ready to shade and outline. Let me go ahead and just replace my lid. If Y'all talking about how y'all can't replace your lids either. I don't know if y'all can see how old this is or how many times I've used it. It doesn't, my lid doesn't actually screw on or pop on anymore. It just sits on there. Uh, that's exactly why we switched to the jars because they are not good for long term. Um, but for me, because I use these so much, it's, I just throw them away when they get nasty and get another one. But then again, I also order about 50 gallons of paint at a time. So, you know, I have it on stock. All right, so right now I'm just gonna get that black on my shoes and on these edges. I always, always, always like my edges to have multiple colors of paint, or I mean multiple um, coats of paint, excuse me. Uh, because if anything's gonna ever happen with your piece, it's typically gonna happen on the edges first. That's like the fanning or anything like that, anything coming undone. So you wanna always make sure you have as much coverage on there as possible to try to prevent anything from happening. I can't really see that side from where I have the camera angle and where I'm sitting, so I'm kind of doing my best. Who knows if I did a decent job on that. Uh, but I'm just gonna get it thrown on here. And then I don't know if you noticed, but I'm, I'm coming back through here and I'm making sure that I take away those brush strokes. Typically, if I start one way, I can take those brush strokes away going the complete opposite. So it's kind of like making perpendicular type lines. Now this, I think I was really supposed to do in dark green, but it didn't end up happening in dark green, so it's just gonna happen in black. There's no right or wrong. You do it however you wanna do it. You could make a pink camo now for all, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. All right, now as far as base coating done, goes, he's done. And I do already have one ready, so I'm just gonna switch him out and grab my dry version. Now, I don't know if you guys can tell, there's been a couple of differences. I did a, a you can't even see right here. I did a lime green right here, but on the other one I did dark green. Totally fine, it don't matter. Uh, but I did paint this one this morning before I went to the store. So since I painted it this morning, I'm not gonna try to shade and outline it until I clean it, which is when your uh, Windex comes in. Give it a couple of great squirts. And I always, we keep these um, terry cloths. I don't know what they're called. Uh, I call them terry cloths. Uh, but we keep these around. We buy, honestly, bags of these all the time. I think I just picked up some paint off my table and wiped it across my piece, but that's okay. I got it right back off. So I'm just kind of cleaning off the surface because I don't know if any of you guys have noticed your paint going and kind of splattering everywhere. That happens from your surface having other things on them, like dust in the air, or I don't even know, the pollen. There's, there's a million different things. I can't say I have the exact cause of this. I don't really know the exact cause, but I know that I don't like it. So now that it's clean, I can start shading. So uh, this is one of my old shaders, y'all, but if y'all ordered that medium shader, I think it was the number eight or 12, that's gonna be the most similar to this brush that I'm gonna use. Um, I'm gonna personally start with things that I know I'm going to have to outline in a different color. So my peach, I'm trying to see if I, either one of these are already watered down. Uh, my peach is gonna get outlined in a maroon, for instance. My beard is gonna get outlined in navy blue and the rest is gonna get outlined in black. So when I'm sitting here thinking about my colors and which one I wanna do or which one I wanna use, I'm thinking about 
how, what I want it to use now, I want it to be dry when I go to outline. So therefore I'm gonna start with the peach and then I think I'm gonna do the beard and then I'll move on to the other colors. Uh, Connie said, I make it look so easy. No, no, my mom makes it look so easy. I feel like I'm a, a, a sloth in comparison to her. But I'm just cut, putting a little paint on that corner, that triangle that I've showed y'all and just following around that perimeter. Now I did wanna, I don't know if you guys are seeing or y'all noticed, but whenever I'm doing this hand, y'all notice I didn't do a line across here because I want it to look like my hand is going into that arm. So if I'm putting that layer across the side, then it's just like my hands on top of it. And I would rather give that uh, kind of 3D effect. So I'm not gonna put a line right here because I'm gonna shade that green right there and make it look like my hand is, or the hand is disappearing into the arm of his uh, shirt. So I don't know if that's uh, maybe a bit too much info, but that's kind of what I go for on things. I'm always looking to make it look like 3D. So there's that peach. Uh, this is your shading flesh. It's number 30. I, I, this one already had a little bit of water in it, obviously. Uh, you don't need much of that. You only need a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and shade my beard with that beard blue. This is beard blue number three. This isn't a color we use often. Honestly, the only thing we really use this on is beards. Santa's beards, gnome beards, any beards. I use it a lot at Christmas time on all my Santas. So I'm just gonna follow along the perimeter of my lines. This is such a small shading space. You're not gonna really see me put a whole lot of wispy lines in here either. Now, I don't know if y'all can see that, but I had a little bit of, um, a little bit of peach still left in my brush right here. That's okay, I'm gonna leave it alone. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have made boo-boos while painting and tried to fix it while you were still painting with exterior paint and don't quite work like that. You have to let it dry and then come back over top because if you try to fix it when it's wet, it's gonna become a blob. And those blobs never look good. So the safest tip I have for you guys whenever you're doing something you screw up, just wait let it dry, and then go back and fix it when it's dry. All right. Now, on him, I could, hi Debbie, I'm so glad you're here with me, honey. I could put some little, some little wisps on him. Um, because he's got a lot going on, I'm not sure I want to, but if you wanted to do a wisp, I'm not gonna add any more paint to my brush. You're literally gonna take it and kind of, here, I got some paper. You're gonna take it and, um, Almost use the corner of it that you have that paint on and just do like light wispy lines like that. That's how you achieve those kind of beardy hair type looks. Um, I don't necessarily care for it on this pattern because he's got that flag right there and I don't like to take away from everything, but I wanted to show y'all how to do that if that's something that you like. All right, so beard blue number three, I am done with him. I'm gonna get him put up. This is kind of, this one's a fast shader, so I might have issues when I'm going to outline him because he's not gonna be dry. Uh, but we're gonna just do our best and see what we can get to. Because the only other thing I'm gonna shade on him is this lime green on uh, this part of his hat, his arms, and his pants. Everything else I'm not gonna shade because it's a small surface area. And when you start putting too much shading in a small surface area, it becomes very, uh, gaudy is the only real word I can come up with for you. Um, and it's not something I think you're going to like when it's done. So it's one of those things, a little less is more. All right, y'all, I don't have a dark green already watered down, so you're going to get to watch. So that's dark green number 12. I, I We buy these like uh, ice cream tester spoons for stir sticks, and I'm going to just add a water into it. Now, I added quite a bit of water. I don't know, I'd say maybe eight or ten drops. Um, I like my shading to be, oh, I'd say at least 20%, 30% water, maybe a little more. It just depends on it. And it depends on how old your brush is or how new your brush is. That's also going to make a difference. If you have older brushes, you need more water. Newer brushes, less water. And I'm going to just dip that corner of my brush and get that triangle and just follow around the perimeter.
Now on here, I am gonna just do a couple just real light lines, wispy lines. I don't wanna do too much, because like I said, this is an easy pattern, especially with the camo. It already has a lot going on. You don't wanna to put too much on there because it'll really take away from the look you're going for. So I'm just gonna get a little bit. And I don't know if y'all noticed too, you know, those white parts that I still had, this is when you'll start to see those white parts getting filled in. Those parts I told you don't worry about because we're gonna get to fix them in a little bit. That's when, this is that part when we start to fix them. And the outline will I'll fix the remainder of them that are left. All right, so kind of want that line to be a little wider, personally. All right. <clears throat> now, typically, I would probably come and put a shader line right here, but since I have USA right here, I'm somebody who likes to have my both sides even, so I'm going to not put anything else. As far as shading goes, I'm done. All the rest of the work on him is going to be outline. So since my um, all my shading colors are, are wet right now and I can't do much with them, I'm gonna start with black outline. Typically, I don't do black outline first, I do it last. Uh, but since it's wet and I can't do anything about that, I'm going to do black first. So, I don't know if y'all can tell, it's already dried out from uh, my lid not sticking. So I'm gonna mix, mix some black. Now when I do this, y'all, this might be closer to like 40% water. Uh, I put a ton of water in this. You want it to glide. If you cannot get your paintbrush to glide a full stroke, and you know it's a short stroke, add a little water. Hi, sweet girl, what are you doing? Nothing. All right, y'all, let's see. Black is one of those things, anytime I'm outlining, it doesn't matter what I'm outlining. It's uh, one of those things, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my brush down. If I don't like the way it looks or the way it feels, then I'll come back and I'll add a little bit more water. I like to do the middle first. That way I'm not dragging my arm across it. Uh, I'm really good at making messes. <laughs> it's way too much. So I like to do the middle first so that I don't, when I go back, if I was trying to do that last, it's very likely that I'm gonna drag my arm through wet paint. So I'm gonna start here. and just make my way around. All right. Now, because this flag is so small, that's exactly why you didn't see me put shading on it. There's not a lot of space to shade, so therefore I leave it. Um, remember, we talked about less is more. Less is more, less is more. If you don't have a whole lot of space, trust me, less is always gonna be more. So let's see. All right, I need to do this stuff in black, but since it's wet, I'm gonna move up to the hat and hope that some of this can dry by the time I move back down. So I'm just following along those perimeter lines with my brush. If this guy did not have camo and he had a plain hat, I obviously would have put a lot of shading on there. But since he's got so many different colors, he didn't need it. Oh, I see a drip of water I got. Clean that off right quick. All right. Now the smoothness of moving these brushes around, that's gonna also come with breaking in your brush. You're only gonna break in your brush by using it. So it's one of those uh, things that could be very frustrating, especially if you're in a new brush, but keep at it and be patient with yourself and uh, keep practicing and eventually it will get better. You could also take your brush and soak it in a little bit of Murphy's oil soap to try to break them in and get that to uh, you know, lend to be better and easier for you. Uh, but I've honestly found they don't, they don't break themselves in. You just got to use them and kind of get through a little period of time where you're really not liking that brush. And then once they're broken in, it's like, oh, oh yes, I have to have that brush. I don't want any other brush. I want that one. And that's kind of how it is with me and this one. 
I've broken it in, so therefore I will search through this room. I might have 20 other brushes I could use, but I don't wanna use them because I'm using this one. So I hope, I'm trying to stay in frame here. Uh, let's see. Do you guys think shading is harder or is script lining harder? I thought both, both of them when I first was started doing it were very difficult to me. But I felt like uh, shading was one of those things I couldn't even imagine how to do it. Like I had, it was like mind blowing. I just couldn't wrap my mind around even attempting. Thank goodness over the years I stuck with it and uh, it's gotten a lot easier. Oh look y'all, I'm gonna show you something. I don't think y'all can see it. Let me see if I can get it up close. Uh, right here. Can you guys see where that paint's separating? And you see those circle, like the uh, separation right here? I don't know if y'all could see that. That is exactly why you Windex. So obviously my Windex did not get over there. And the only way to fix that is to keep taking your brush and stroking over top of it or to let it dry and Windex it again and try it again. It's one of those things, I think it's the pollen, honestly. I don't know for sure, but if I had to guess, that, that's my guess. So, I'm curious if y'all have seen that. Debbie, how long do we soak the new brushes? Honey, I would say at least 15, 20, 30 minutes. Um, you could even do longer than that. Because we use these brushes so often, we don't even have to soak them ourselves because we'll break them in just by using them over and over and over and over. Uh, but I would say at least soak it for 15, 20, 30 minutes and then, uh, and then try to use it. And then also another thing to do is whenever you are breaking in a new brush, this is all wet, so I'm gonna be careful where I do this, but you're gonna want to kind of take those bristles and teach them how to open up some. When you can get them to open up and you can get them to soften, that's when you're gonna get that desired look. So whether you're using a shader or you're using a script liner, which is what I'm, I'm using right now, but here's a clean one. You know, you're gonna wanna kinda get that to open up a little bit. So it's gonna just take some playing around with it. All right, so I can already tell y'all this is not going to be dry fast enough. So we're just gonna paint it and I might have to come back tomorrow or you know later on when it's dry and do a couple of touch-ups because the paint is already mixing. Like that dark green I, I just came over was still wet. But that's okay. Let's see, I'm trying to, these, these bigger pieces are very difficult to do in a frame on a live, because uh, they're just so big. So I know you know, there's a few spots y'all can't see, I'm sorry. All I'm doing right now is taking that black and following those perimeter lines. This one is one of the easier patterns to do because it doesn't, ha it's a lot more of base coating, I guess. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of shading. And I, I don't know about y'all, but I think shading's pretty, it was harder for me. So uh, I'm gonna do a couple of like light wisps on that green. And as far as that black goes, I'm gonna call it a day. I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna switch over and do my navy blue on my beard. Now, anytime we outline beards, hair, uh, it could be hair or beard, doesn't matter. Uh, we do not use black. It looks too dark and too bold and just, again, gaudy is the only word I can really come up with. Oh, look, y'all, I'm sitting here getting back the beard blue. I don't need the beard blue. I need the navy blue. Um, but we, we're gonna shade it with pretty much another color in that family excuse me so when it comes to trying to shade the beard blue i'm going to use navy blue when it comes to shading my my skin tones i'm going to use maroon so that's why you don't it's it doesn't look fully outlined i was done with the black but the rest of the stuff that you don't see outlined is not black so this one i'm gonna have to definitely get some water in here because remember, anytime you're outlining, I'm always gonna add a, a lot of water to it. Shading, a couple of drops. Outline, a lot. But start with a little bit and, and put your brush down, put your, dip your brush in the paint and put it down on your piece. If you like the way it looks, then you're good. Don't, don't try to over add. Um, this is just how I like to do it, what I find to be easier. 
doesn't mean everybody's going to find it to be easier. But that water is also allowing my brush to hold on to a lot of paint. So now all those little white spots that we're poking through, this is when they really disappear. And take it and very lightly, very, very lightly, you just kind of glide over your little wisps. And then I'm going to outline this bottom. All that white part that I had sticking through that I told y'all, okay, you know it's not supposed to be white. This is when you fix it. That's why I don't worry about it so much when I'm base coating because I already know I'm coming back in here in a little bit to do this. And that's really going to touch up all those little boo boos I might have had. Y'all, I don't know if y'all have heard the birds in here, but um, I told y'all a couple weeks ago that we had birds and that uh, they've been up here making a nest. Well, now they we have baby birds and mom and dad come in here every day. These guys are on, they're at the top eve of my garage door. It's actually right next to where I'm sitting. And uh, mom and dad come in here every day that I see, I'd say they at least come in here a dozen times to feed the birds. And so every time they come in here to feed their babies, the babies start chirping and it is the cutest sound. I love it. So mom and dad come and sing and then the babies are chirping and it's just so peaceful. I've enjoyed all my birds. Hi Deidre, I'm sorry honey, I'm just now seeing that you're here. Deidre's asking, when are we gonna paint the birdhouse and sunflower? Uh, I am planning on uh, probably doing a live tomorrow and su Sunday, don't know 100%. Uh, I know I haven't gotten to the birdhouse, I haven't gotten to the popsicle gnome. Uh, there's been a few I haven't gotten to. So I'm gonna try to get us caught up this weekend, uh, whether it's tomorrow, Sunday, or Monday before our sneak peek live, because I wanna make sure that anything you guys already have, that y'all you know, know how to work on those. So um, be patient with us, Deidre. I'm so sorry, honey. Uh, we're, we're trying to. I was talking to mom, my mom, Mary, yesterday or day before. I don't recall when it was. And I was just telling her that I think we need to maybe not do so many new patterns at once and just kind of maybe do three to five on our lives. Because what that means is for her and I, it means a lot of video time and a lot of work. And so, um, I think we're like Monday, I think we're going to show you guys, I don't know, maybe six patterns and then let that be it for the week. Cause that means then we need to do live those patterns. So be patient with us. We're trying to get better at it. I, I'm, I'm hoping in the next couple of weeks or a couple of months, we'll really have this a lot more streamlined and you guys won't be, uh, chasing your tails, trying to figure out what's what we're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Hi, Brittany. I just saw that you got, you joined in. Uh, you said you're super duper late, but he looks amazing. Oh, you're fine, honey. You're so fine. We're, we're still got a little bit of work to do. I'm just finishing up the outlining. I'm outlining uh, my flesh tone. So I started with uh, a flesh of 29, and then this is my shading flesh 30, and then this is actually shading red. I think it's 23. Ugh, I believe it's 23, but I didn't actually write it down on my pad. So I'm using that shading red on my flesh tone. I don't want to outline flesh in black because that can just be way too stark of a look that I'm going for. I don't want it to all be a black tone, you know, so that's why you see my beard done in the outline of a navy blue and the flesh done in the outline of, uh, this one's like a maroon, a shading red, um, so that you get that contrast between the two. So as far as outlining y'all, he's done. Isn't he stinking cute? I love him. Now, I obviously have to put a lot of white in here, and I need to come in here and do my USA. Uh, since I didn't have a lot of shading, or any shading actually, on my hat, um, that's when your white is going to really come into play and be incredibly important in bringing this piece together. So, I know y'all have heard me say it before, you got to have a lot of water added. Oh, my white's dried out, y'all. Give me one second. Let me go grab some more. Hold on. I didn't bring any to the table, and that one is nasty. Yo, 
Case in point, why we switched to the jars, because these things for long term aren't good. It's just dried out and nasty. Uh, so I'm gonna start with some white. And y'all, when I'm doing white, I'm telling you, you're gonna want about 50% water. You're gonna need a ton of water, a lot more than you think you're gonna need to get that water down to be the consistency that you're gonna want for highlights. A lot of times I'll even start here putting a lot of water and I'll start putting it down on my piece and I'm like, nope, go back, get a bunch more water because it ain't quite what I want it to be. And that white always seems to be one that needs more water than any other color. Deidre said that she likes the idea of three to five new blanks a week, so that means you can have a sneak peek each week. Exactly, honey. Uh, we are going to be trying to do that more consistently. I've got a ton of new patterns that I just got, a ton of like pattern templates that I think you guys are going to love, but I don't want to give it all to y'all next week. I'm going to give you a little bit next week and then a little bit the week after because uh, it's just so much new fun stuff. All right, so now I'm just going to take that white and I'm doing the outline or my highlighting, excuse me. So on my shoes, I, don't, I, I kind of was talking too much. I didn't, I, I obviously did not follow that perimeter. I'm using that almost around the perimeter, kind of creating its own little boundary. I don't want to, if I actually took it down and I put it around the perimeter, it's going to look too mm, boxy. Boxy is the only thing I could really come up with to say. <gasps> Oh, I got a little black in that white, so that's okay. Since that peach was dry, I'm going to wipe that off, and I'm going to unload my brush on my shirt, actually, <laughs> and then get a little bit of clean white on here. There we go. Now, no right or wrong on highlights. It's kind of wherever you feel, honestly, especially when I'm uh, sitting here working and not talking, uh, my brush just takes me where it wants to go, and I follow it. I just allow it to lead me. I don't try to, you know, make it do any certain thing. I just go with the flow of uh, wherever my brush takes me is where I go. And um, I don't try to make it do anything it doesn't want to do. So there we go. All right. Now on this top part, um, I'm there's honestly, oh, no right or wrong, really no right or wrong. It's going to be just kind of getting some swoopy lines in here wherever you feel like you might need them. I like to try to follow along with those edges that have the really great um, lean-ins, a lean-in of, of a circular side. And that's kind of where I, I typically gravitate towards when I'm doing this. But again, no right or wrong. Wherever your brush takes you, let it take you there, and you just follow it. All right, now trying to just look back and see and make sure that I like the way it looks. Um, I could do a little bit of white on the flag. I don't want to do too much because I don't want to take away from the look of my flag, you know. But I don't think a little bit will hurt it. All right. All right, y'all. I'm going to say that he's done. Let me see if I can get him back in the frame a little better. Can we see him? He's not the easiest thing to see. He's kind of big. So he's 28 inches tall, and I want to say he's about 20 inches wide. He's on the bigger side. So you can get this blank online at Yard or Us, and it's $25. Uh, I will have some painted versions out next week. I was hoping to have them out this week, but it, it, it just didn't happen. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, so let's see. I want to make sure I've answered any questions. Uh, Debbie, you said you need your new cups. I know. All my new cups are at the store. They're not here. And the spoons, the spoons that I use, they're like ice cream tester spoons. You can get them at a restaurant supply store. Quite honestly, we need to just get a bunch of them and have them at the store for you guys and, uh, oops, excuse me, and uh, give you all some, some of these clear plastic cups and some spoons because you all need them. I use them like crazy. Uh, but yeah, they're just your little spoon testers that you, you'll get at an ice cream store. You could even use popsicle sticks. Uh, popsicle sticks are another great thing. If you have those at the house, you can go to a dollar store and get them for a dollar. That's a great thing for stirring around paint because that's all we're really doing is just stirring. So here's that camo gnome. I hope you guys like it. Um, I will see you guys this weekend. Let's see, we need to do a, a birdhouse and our um, popsicle gnome as well. So I'll, you'll see me in the next two to three days doing both of those so I can get, get you guys caught up for our live on Monday. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I'll see you guys later on this weekend when we paint again. Bye guys. I'll see y'all next time.